We'd now like to take a moment to recognize our, uh, this past season's deceased members, and then we'll give them a moment of silence at the end, please. Kenneth Burnett, Albert Chandler, Jennings House, Alan Johnston, Donald Lindsay, and Daniel Wood. Please take a moment to give them a moment of silence. Okay, thank you. And now on to the uh, secretary report for this year. The 2020 season has been a challenge for all of us. The chapter did a wonderful job working as a team to turn out another successful season, all while facing restrictions at facilities due to the pandemic, having to reschedule events, and also weather issues. Every one of our events were either sold out, and they were sold out early when they were sold out. During these challenging times, our partners still committed to sponsor our chapter events. We even gained a few new partners, and we're lucky to have such great partners and sponsors to encourage, and we encourage you to thank each of them personally. It can be simple as a thank you email following the event, or just reaching out to them when they come visit you at, at your shops. This goes a long way to show the partners and sponsors how much we appreciate they do for the chapter. As I transition to my role as your tournament committee chairperson to secretary, Sunny Grasso and JR Friend did a wonderful job moving into the tournament committee chair roles. We would like to thank them for all their hard work and look forward to another great tournament season next year. None of this, None of the success would be possible without the help of a few other special individuals. Jeff Gorduz, who's our tournament coordinator, and Dominic Smith, who is our competitions coordinator. Both those gentlemen, without those gentlemen, we wouldn't be able to have the events we do, and they do a great job. As we, um, excuse me, I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the newly elected uh, members of the PGA of America. Welcome to the Southeast chapter. Don't hesitate to reach out to one of the board, one of us board members or any committee member with questions of how you can become an active member of our chapter. Most of all, I'd like to thank Rich Waggy, Paul Clubio, and Jeff Waver for inviting me to join the chapter and the board in late 2017. I'm excited to take on my new role as your secretary, working with Jeff Waver, Ben Bauer, Sean Costello, and our committee chairs to help continue with the progress we have made these past years with our chapter. Thank you to everyone that expressed their gratitude for all I've done these past few years, hosting events and professionals that were able to participate in our events. At this time, we'd like to play a video from one of our sponsors and partners, Easy Go. EasyGo Elite was the first series of lithium fleet golf cars introduced to the industry. So we were used to being first in efficiency and first in long lasting performance. Being number one just came with the territory. Now, years after we introduced Elite, a competitor has released their own lithium golf car. But with more than 80,000 Elite vehicles exceeding expectations on courses around the world, we're not worried we see an opportunity to prove we're the best. We ran our elite lithium RXV up against the others in a head-to-head -head test of performance, a dawn-to-dusk showdown that pushed every car to its limits, testing range, efficiency, cost of operation, everything that matters to you most. At the end of the day, we proved two things. Elite lithium is in a class of its own, and we're still number one. Thank you. Paul, appreciate that. Now I'd like to have the report <laughs> oops, me, of the Vice President, Mr. Ben Bauer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, to say that 2020 has been like any other year we've ever seen is really an understatement. Uh, but to echo what Paul said in his report, back in the spring, 
Uh, we've reached out to, to all of our partners and some new partners and have to say that you know, they all stepped up without hesitation in supporting our events for 2020. So as Paul mentioned, please make an effort to, to thank them and be sure to consider them when making your buying decisions. I'd also like to thank all the facilities who hosted our events this summer. We know it was not an easy task um, with some of the final details not being available until last minute, but as always, our professionals and facilities were up to the challenge. I would also like to thank everyone who participated and made the event successful this summer, even with everything happening in the world and at the facilities we work for. Uh, one of the, the new events that we had this year was very successful, the, the partners match play. Uh, so thank you for everyone to, uh, for your support of, of that event. And uh, it looks like that'll be part of the schedule going forward. Uh, as we transition out of the tournament season, this is the time of year where we, we try to get some education your way. Um, so we're working on chapter university, but uh, there are biweekly section education sessions via Zoom. And later on, uh, you'll hear from our education chair, Marty Hall, uh, who will be addressing this. And lastly, I would just like to thank um, all of our, uh, excuse me, take the opportunity to congratulate all of our uh, chapter awards winners who will be announced today. Uh, we're very fortunate to have so many qualified professionals in our chapter. All are very deserving and represent the best of the best in the Southeast chapter and in the South Florida PGA section. So with that, uh, we are gonna now see a couple videos from partners uh, from Northwestern Mutual and Prestwood. Good morning, my name is Doug Mosh with Northwestern Mutual. I appreciate your time this morning. And I'm proud to be a partner with the Southeast chapter. As a 25 year PGA member, I understand what you're going through on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'd love to become your trusted advisor for your financial planning needs be it from life insurance, term life, or whole life, disability insurance, long-term care, college planning, and any 401k rollovers that you need to make. You can reach out to me at doug.mauch at nn.com, that's M-A-U-C-H, or at 516-670-7100. Thanks again, I appreciate your time, and I hope you have a great season. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Sergio. I'm our director of sales at Prestwick Golf Group. Uh, Prestwick has been a supporting partner of the Southeast South Florida section for five years now. We've provided you with tee markers and other products for your chapter events, help dress those up, give you more of a tournament atmosphere. We are a leading manufacturer of outdoor furnishings. We provide practice facilities, bag drop areas, on course amenities with site furnishings to coordinate a, a tailored furnishing offering out of both recycling plastic materials and some exotic hardwoods. We acquired Sister Bay Furniture Company in the fall of 2018. We rebranded and relaunched that into the golf and hospitality market. Casual outdoor spaces have become very relevant now as we social distance and create outdoor environments to continue our operation and provide our members and guests with a safe and healthy environment. Sister Bay Furniture allows us to differentiate ourselves by showing you existing spaces you may have and wanting to recreate with a new space with our furnishing offerings. Sister Bay is also allowing you the ability to offer our great furniture to your members and your guests through a dealer program that we've created. You can reach out to myself or Ben for a little bit more information about that offering, which I really feel is a great added benefit to your membership. We've had to pivot a little bit uh, due to the pandemic. We developed a complete line of care solutions to help combat the pandemic. What we have done is create a full line of sneeze guards, sanitizer stands and stations. We've had many clubs down in the Southeast area of Florida take advantage of these offerings to help create a more safe, friendly environment for their members and guests. We all at Presswick wish you a safe and healthy rest of 2020 as you prepare for a very much anticipated fall and winter season to showcase your members and guests the great experiences that they've come to enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Steve from Presswick. Appreciate that uh, video there. Before I get on with um, uh, my president's report, 
I'd like to send it back to Ben Bauer, um, our Vice President. He has a few more words about our financials. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, in your packets, you, you will see the financials. Uh, we, it does show at this point that we are running at a, a little bit of a deficit, uh, but just know we're, we're still waiting on uh, the timing of, of some of the partner uh, support, as well as the golf pass monies that will be coming uh, in in December. So we fully expect to end the year in the black uh, with a very successful year financially and, um, and move into 2021 on a good note. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. And now I'll go through our president's report here for the Southeast chapter. It is in your packet. Uh, most of it is as written. Just like to say a few words. Again, we've uh, been very lucky to have a great uh, team here at the board level, and, and it really couldn't happen without uh, all the great uh, PGA members that helped uh, develop our chapter. So I want to say thank you there. I also want to uh, take some time to say I boldly want to thank and applaud all of you, everybody here that signed in to watch this Zoom meeting. People don't say it enough, but I've heard countless stories of different ways you've reinvented yourselves as PGA members and associates. And, and it's really something between your, your new staffing programs to the way you take care of golf cars and, and bag storage, et cetera. So I just want to give you a round of applause and, and, and great kudos to all the workers that have done very well the last six months. Again, I'd like to say thank you uh, to, uh, it's going to be redundant, but our friend Jeff Gorduz for all of his hard working and his uh, task management. We had bounced around probably, what, 50 times this, this <laughs> summer, guys, and, and and girls, and we do appreciate his uh, nimble actions to be able to host about nine events this summer. So thanks to Jeff Gordews and all of his hard work. Um, the pandemic has put us in a, in a tough place and has pushed our chapter board to think outside the box. Uh, like we had said earlier, we found some great new formats. We found some great partners. Um, again, thanks from my end to Sonny Grosso and JR, as Paul had said before, and all of our great partners. I'll list a few of these off real quickly here. Um, I want to say thanks to EasyGo. We saw a video there. JF Liquidation. Thank you, Mr. Feingold. Prestwood Golf Group. We saw a video from Strixon, Cleveland, Zexio, and Asics. Thank you from Northwestern Mutual. And we'll see some videos coming up from StickX, Signature Golf, and can -Am. And one I didn't want to forget, which one of our major partners here at the end of my report, is a big thanks to uh, Steve Sponder. He's one of uh, the true uh, kind-hearted gentlemen here in the South uh, Florida area, not just the section, but our chapter. He stepped up the last uh, three or four years and really provided us with countless amount of help and, and guidance to get us some of the best uh, events we could possibly have. So, Steve, you're signed in. We appreciate your help, and thanks so much. That concludes my report for the presidency. I would like to get into one of our other major partners uh, from a video here from StickX. Hi, I'm Kyle Branham. And I'm Dan Yaccarino. And we're with StickX Golf. What we do at StickX completely simplifies the club trade-in process. Our website can be found at www.stickxgolf.com. You'll be able to request an account, see the value of clubs, and start trading. The trade-in process is simple. Just use our easy-to-follow menu to find and select your club. Enter the condition of the club, and if the price is agreeable to you and your member, add it to your cart. To complete the transaction, navigate to the order page to review your submission. While there, you will have the opportunity to include a note, such as a member name or number, that will appear on your order confirmation email and can be used to track transactions for your organization's records. Our goal is to get you paid as fast as possible, so we initiate payment the same day your order is submitted. We will also come and pick up your trade-in so there's no shipping and no waiting for payment. We also offer demo day services as well as standalone trade-in events. And as some of you may know, I've spent the last 15 years managing the hard goods and the trade-ins for the club at Ibis. I'm excited to announce that I'm now part of this great company, StickX. I want to share with you that at Ibis has increased its trade revenue over $40,000 a year working with StickX. We all know the challenges of shipping trade-ins and waiting weeks for the credit. 
Well, StickX procedure is efficient and simple. We look forward to servicing your facility. Hello, everybody. This is Mark Van Dyke, PGA Director of Golf at Fort Lauderdale Country Club and your District 13 Director serving the PGA of America. I hope you're all well during this pandemic, and I'm addressing you, obviously, virtually for your chapter meetings. Hopefully, we'll be getting back to real meetings in person sooner than later. Just want to give you a few updates on what's going on in the world of national affairs, starting with the 104th annual meeting. Um, as you know, the annual meeting is typically a three or four day event, but we've condensed it to three hours due to the fact that we have to do this virtually as well. Um, so the schedule events on Thursday, October 29th from two to five will be as follows. We will have the outgoing directors. We will also hear from the officers and CEO reports, and we will go to consideration of resolutions. We will immediately go to the secretary election procedure, nomination speeches and seconds, votes, caucuses, and votes again. Um, the four candidates will run, and once we've voted in the first round, if all four stay in the race, we will vote again. We will have a caucus and vote again. If all four want to stay in the race in the second round, the, the, the candidate with the least amount of votes will be eliminated. Same thing if we go to a third round. This expedites the process for the national election, and we will have our secretary um, that day. The installation of offices will be the last order of business. President Jim Richardson will be sworn in, as well as Vice President John Leonard, and of course, our new secretary. I want to give kudos to Tom Brawley, our senior director of membership, for all his hard work in putting this together. Just a couple of brief um, updates on properties. Palm Beach Gardens. The staff is getting ready to move into the new, re newly renovated 100 building at Palm Beach Gardens sometime in mid-December. We will be added a 300 building, which we currently lease. The cost of new renovation for the 100 building is well under budget. And furthermore, we're going to be able to sublease some parts of it uh, during the time we're there. The CLP has been sold. I know there was some speculation there. We're getting out of a four lease, four month lease as, as well with our new buyer, who is AHA Residential, bought the property, and that triggered the expansion of the PGA Golf Club practice facility. Some of you that have already been to the golf club have seen the work being done. I could promise you it'll be state of the art and a fantastic representation, representation of what we do. Um, for PGA of America and our members. Moving on to Frisco, the construction of the building has begun and with everything on time and projected well under budget, the building is to be done by early 22. Um, we will move the staff in immediately thereafter and hopefully have a grand opening sometime in June of 2022. The golf courses are coming along nicely. Architect Gil Hans and J Jimmy Terry, our general manager, are very happy with the progress. And a special shout out to our Chief Operating Officer, Daryl Crawl, who is completely responsible for the project there and has done an amazing job on all fronts. I'd like to now turn to the Associates and the PGM update. As you know, this has been a hot topic of discussion. Based on the recommendations of the Education, Employment, and Membership Committees, as well as recommendations from a task force committee created by President Whaley, the Board is looking at updates to the Associate and GMU programs over the next last nine months. We've been talking about it for a long time since January. We're looking at a new direction with better price and an opportunity. The current system is not working. Fact of this is, fact of the matter is, the current number of associates and PGM students has declined 50% in the last five years and has not grown at all in the previous 15. Data-driven numbers have given us a direction to improve on this. Associates want virtual education, period, they do. Number one reason why associates aren't furthering into business is because of the work-life balance and the compensation. Those are the two detriments in getting into the business right now. We currently have 25,000 active in life members, but only less than 5,000 associates and PGM students. So you can see the downward slide here. We need to get more associates into the pipeline for the future of our association. The board has tasked again the three committees, employment, membership, and education to come up with a high level solution. They've collaborated and we've agreed on the following. Core education will be virtual and then to be completed in 24 months. We will not, and I repeat, will not reduce the standards of membership. We will remove all barriers and aids in recruitment. We will allow more competent students and, pro and prospects to come in. For example, college players or former tour players. We need to capture these young men and women as they have the pedigree to be great PGA members. 
The only issue from the three committees right now is how many trips would be necessary for an associate to go to Frisco. Currently, golf operations and executive management is it calling for one trip, but teaching and coaching is calling for two trips. We are working on that right now, but we are just thinking of the PGA associate and, and everything with respect to cost. Obviously, a second trip to Frisco is a very, very expensive venture for an up-and-coming associate member. The timeline and communication leading up to this point, just so everyone knows. The discussion was had at the PGA show in January that something needed to be done with the PGA programs at the GMUs, and there would be a call to action. The board was presented with information on a possible GMU change back in March at the spring planning session. Letters were sent to the GMU stating that there are changes to the program coming. The board has spent countless hours since March, I can assure you this, because I've been involved in every meeting. And what I said earlier is the recommendation. Of course, I mentioned the ad hoc committee had PGM directors, PGA staff, officers, and executive directors. In fact, Jeff Lofsted is on the committee. The PGA of America is not going to renew the current contracts. We are not terminating the GMUs as all schools may reapply under the new system. Universities may opt out if they wish. Unfortunately, some of the programs there are working and they're welcome to opt out. Most of the GMUs are fully on board with the changes, all agreeing that changes are needed based on what I said earlier about the downslide. Internships will continue and welcome diversity, second careers and student athletes. And if 4.0 is adopted, it's important to note that the program will not start until 2023. I know this is a very, very, very sensitive subject over the last couple of months. And please know that myself, along with the entire board, officers, and everybody in that room are doing everything we can for the PGA of America's members and associates. We are here to serve you. We work together to do what's best for the association, period, now and forever. Decisions aren't easy, and some of these decisions are very, very hard, but this is certainly one of them. We are looking at all the options and being agile on how we should move forward. Just know that we're all here to serve you, the PGA member and associate. The decision and all decisions for that matter are driven by the entire board of directors. I'd like them to switch to the PGA Championship. It was a very successful week considering all the challenges. Um, it was a fantastic week for me to be there with the PGA of America staff, as well as working with the PGA Tour, uh, being able to call the player names the day, uh, the second round of the event was a humbling experience for me. Um, being able to see our very own Justin Birch out there playing and spending some time with him in the hotel was fantastic as well. Um, our new partners at ESPN, bought us a whole new demographic of viewers. ESPN's coverage was 70% higher than TNT's last year. We focused heavily on our 20 PGA members. CBS and ESPN did a credible job all week long. And if you had the ESPN Plus app, you had phenomenal coverage all week as well. The final round in Eastern primetime and around the country had just under 7 million viewers watching the final round of the PGA Championship. That is unprecedented and fantastic. The event brought us people together. It brought us from people all over the world to see what the PGA of America is all about. It truly was a successful week and I gotta give kudos to Chief Champions Officer Kerry Haig and his entire team for running a flawless event. In closing, I would like to leave you with a message on just how important you are. We are the front line and the last line of the great sport we all love. My job as your district director is to give you the information and communicate to you as much as I can what's going on so you can perform at your very, very best. Please reach out to me if you have any questions at all regarding national affairs. It is truly a privilege and honor to serve you as your District 13 director. Have a great meeting. Good morning, South Florida PGA. It's your friends and trusted travel partners at Signature Golf. We wanted to check in and let you know we've been keeping up with the travel trends for 2021 and 2022. Right now, with Signature Golf, you can book with confidence any 2021 trip for only $750 down. Places like Pebble, Kiowa, Big Cedar, grab your favorite members and let's set you up. Trending for 2022. 
is the one and only return to St. Andrews, the home of golf for the Open Championship. This is the 150th plane lifting of the clear jug. We are so excited to present this right now with zero down through December 31st. Please be on the lookout for the next couple of days for information about our book with confidence and travel policy. So the open this year, we've got three different hospitality packages. And like I mentioned before, you don't have to pay anything until March 2021. Signature Golf is proud to be an authorized provider of open championship packages. Signature Golf is making a limited time offer to our South Florida PGA professionals. Right now, if you book any 2021 or 2022 international trip before December 31st, we will add 50% extra earnings for you. So based on a trip for $5,000 per guest, you would get your complimentary trip and airfare, plus right now an extra 15, nearly $1,600 cash in hand, 14 clients, 23 clients. It's your trip and your choice. The sky's the limit. In addition, for every paid international traveler, Signature Golf provides $100 towards the South Florida PGA. Contact us today via your regional director. With Signature, there's so many ways to book with confidence. Thanks for having me today to talk a little bit about Section Affairs at your virtual fall chapter meeting. Before we get started, I want to thank Jeff Waver for his service as the Southeast Chapter President. He also serves on the Section Board of Directors in that role, and also for his time as Tournament Committee Chairperson. Jeff donates and sacrifices quite a bit of time on, on behalf of the chapter, and I want to thank Jeff for uh, what he does to continue to serve his fellow members. I guess I could start with a lot of topics, but it only seems appropriate that the topic I'd start with today would, would be COVID and uh, really the current situation as it relates to golf. For, for the majority of the Southeast chapter, and this is uh, Palm Beach County withstanding, we'll, I'll come back to Palm Beach County, but uh, for the majority of the Southeast chapter, it is now basically operations as normal. You have the ability to uh, make all your decisions at your facility that is in the best interest of uh, you. That's everything from shared golf carts to bag storage, bag handling, flag sticks, bunker rakes. It, it certainly is just basically normal golf operations that you can make your own decisions. I, I think that's been the, the one thing throughout this that has been a little bit misleading is that uh, really at all times the, the state has never been involved in in telling golf facilities what they had to do. The state uh, ha has more so uh, relied on the counties in order to do that. And most of the counties in the Southeast chapter have not had rules uh, for COVID in place. For Palm Beach County, there is still uh, an emergency order in place. And that emergency order is uh, one that requires social distancing, uh, enhanced cleaning procedures and facial coverings. How that relates to the biggest issue, which, which so many of you have asked me about, is shared golf carts. And they did recently, uh, after they published Emergency Order 28, uh, which will be two weeks old, I guess, tomorrow, uh, they did publish a frequently asked questions document. And on that document, they addressed the shared golf cars. And in the document, they indicated that shared golf cars uh, are allowed for uh, same households and also for uh, two people that have facial coverings while they're playing. They did not say anything about cart dividers, though that was previously allowed, so I'm certain that if you have cart dividers, that's an acceptable form uh, of shared golf carts. At, at this point, I don't know uh, when that might change. Uh, I still have frequent communication with the county, and uh, right now there is no talk about uh, changing that order. Every single other order was basically repealed uh, and wrapped up into this new emergency order 28. For those of you that are looking for 
cart dividers, we do have a partner called Golf Safer, and they uh, worked with us on several events over the course of the summer. Several of the facilities where we had events had uh, cart dividers in. In those cases, we were uh, able to share the golf cart. So uh, if you want more information on that, please contact the section office. I, you know, I, I would say the last thing with respect to COVID that, that I certainly wanted to highlight is what happened uh, early in April. You know, primarily from uh, Palm Beach County, it was an idea brought forward by Paul Clivio, and that idea was to uh, have facilities adopt local hospitals and provide them with food or gift cards. Uh, and, and there was certainly uh, some goodwill, some great appreciation from uh, our first responders and, and medical workers, but uh, also we, we received some, uh, some great publicity from the local media. So thanks to Paula, thanks to all of you in the Southeast chapter uh, I think we have 20 hospitals in Palm Beach County that uh, participate in the program. So it certainly was a great program and, and provided some goodwill for us uh, going forward. We are uh, in the section office. We're working on a new app called Clubster. Uh, this new app functions very similar to uh, whether it be message boards or even Facebook in that uh, there will be threads in the app that you can reply to and, and put information in. The, the idea behind this app is to uh, be able to share information when you want to gather this information, when you want to consume this information, as opposed to uh, the reply all emails that uh, that I've been a part of. I'm sure many of you have been a part of that uh, in some cases have uh, 75 to 80 people on these emails. They're difficult to read, hard to stay on topic. This new app will be sending information out, but we'll be starting uh, a bunch of threads in this app. And it, and it functions almost better, really, we think, than a survey. Uh, which we've talked about doing a lot of the content in there would be what we would gather in a survey but uh, it, it can be updated at any point and consumed at any point by you so uh, please be on the lookout for our clubster app uh, as we get that uh, moving forward once we once we got our tournament season started uh, really around the third week of june we've had what uh, what we would consider a, a pretty normal tournament season our participation has been uh, up in, in almost every event. Our tournament purses have been up as compared to last year. Uh, the Southeast chapter, uh, as they normally do, had some great performances this year. Uh, just this weekend, Southeast chapter member Joe Kern won uh, the Naples Beach Club Senior Open. Earlier uh, this last month, Tyler Collett won the section championship. Rafael Floriani won the senior section championship. So uh, across the board, some great playing from the Southeast chapter. Uh, this week is the Senior PGA Professional Championship, which starts on Thursday at PGA Golf Club. We have 11 Southeast Chapter members participating in that event, so we wish you all uh, the best of luck as, as you head up there to compete for uh, this national championship. Next week, one week from today, uh, we will kick off our first ever women's section championship at Quail Ridge. Uh, we still have registration available for that. We, we as a section have the most women in the country that are members of our sections. We uh, certainly hope to have a, a, a big turnout for that event. Uh, more information can be found on, on the section website for that championship. Next week, the South Florida team heads to Naples at Club Pelican Bay to uh, try to win the Challenge Cup back from the North Florida section. The Southeast chapter will be uh, well represented on that team with Tyler Collett, Alan Warren, Steve Baselio, Mike Berger, and Matt Cahill. Uh, we're looking forward to a uh, great few days of matches and, and winning the cup back this year. Uh, one thing as, as we as we kind of approach the, the holiday season and uh, online shopping, it, and particularly right now, it, it certainly seems that there's probably more online shopping being done than, than even was in the past. One of the ways that you can help the South Florida PGA Charitable Foundation uh, really with, with no uh, harm to yourself is that if you in the app or on the website if you shop on Amazon and you choose uh, it, Amazon smiles and you choose our foundation as a benefiting charity we will receive 5% of all of your purchases that you make on Amazon you still receive the same prices uh, that you normally would but uh, it's a program that Amazon does to get back to charitable foundations so uh, in the app you can choose that online you can choose that but i would encourage you to do so it's, it's an opportunity where uh, a significant amount of money can be donated back to our foundation just from your normal everyday shopping our annual awards uh, process as if you as you've seen has uh, been accomplished for this year we we have some great winners unfortunately the 
way in which we honor them is not going to be the same as it has in the past. We uh, will not be able to conduct our annual awards dinner. We will, however, uh, be honoring these individuals at their facility at a function of their choice uh, sometime over the golf season. Uh, certainly, we hope that we'll have the opportunity to honor them uh, in front of a large amount of their members, but for each uh, individual situation, we'll handle that for each award winner. And we have uh, quite a few award winners here in the Southeast chapter. Uh, the biggest one, uh, Golf Professional Year. He was also an, an inductee uh, and will be inducted into our Hall of Fame this year, Victor Tortorisi. Uh, congratulations, Vic, on, a, on an amazing, uh, amazing career that, that you have and, and still uh, continue to have there at Sailfish Point. Be uh, a great representative as our Golf Professional of the Year and, and certainly amongst uh, the legends in South Florida in our Hall of Fame. Uh, we also have Lee Strever that won the PGA Professional Development Award, Mike McClellan, the Deacon Palmer Award, Pam Elders, the Player Development Award, Mike Schutte, Merchandiser of the Year in the Private Category. We have Bob Komen, who won the Merchandiser of the Year in the Resort Category, and then Pete Byman, who services uh, almost all of the Southeast chapter, was our Salesperson of the Year. So uh, congratulations, to, congratulations to all of you on, on your uh, great accomplishment. It, it certainly is uh, an honor, I know, to be recognized by your peers. Uh, one one reminder that, that I want to share with all of you, if, you, if you don't have our section app, our Blue Golf app, I would uh, remind you to, uh, to download that app. It contains uh, all information related to section tournament activities, chapter tournament activities. Uh, it also has our section directory included in there, all the contact information. It, it functions just like most other apps and that you just touch on a number and it'll launch a text message for you or if you need directions or uh, a phone call, the same thing will happen. I, I would encourage you to download that app. You go to your app store, uh, just search South Florida PGA, you'll be able to find that app. One, one of the items that uh, PGA of America has done a significant amount of work on and is a great tool and resource for you is PGA.coach. If, if you have not looked into the ADM certification through PGA.coach, uh, you should visit the website PGA.coach, uh, look at the certification. It provides a, a great deal of tools and resources that you can use uh, as a coach. In addition, on PGA.coach, you can create your own coach profile. Uh, this will be shared out. There's a tremendous amount of traffic that's been driven to PGA.coach from PGA.com, uh, which is our consumer facing website from PGA of America, but PGA.coach is a valuable resource. Those that have the PGA.coach profile set up uh, and have had leads come to them have indicated that uh, it has generated some new students for them. So uh, take a look at PGA.coach. I, I think you'll find some value in, in that particular uh, program that's available to you. Uh, in closing, I, I certainly would wish uh, all of you the best of luck on, on the upcoming season. I, I know it's going to be uh, a unique season, uh, a challenging season. Uh, just know that, that we're here in the section office to uh, to answer any questions you have. It, it, I, I know that you'll have a lot of questions and if anything, you just wanna know really what others are doing so that, that, that you know you're kinda on the same page uh, with what other facilities are doing. Uh, we'll continue to do everything we can to, to gather and promote information, uh, but good luck on your season. Please contact myself or anyone in the section office if we can be of service. Thank you. Golf's a little different than other sports. I mean, there's a lot of barriers to entry. If we can get these kids introduced to this young and kind of have them get over that animosity that golf has those barriers to entry, I mean, this game is just going to create, we're going to create the golfers that stick around and play forever. If you haven't done the ADM training, you, your kids are missing out. Like not even your kids, your players across the whole entire board. When you can introduce them to the sport and they have those motor pattern controls, you know, when we're looking at that functional movement patterns that we look at with the running, jumping, skipping, hopping, throwing. This game can be very frustrating, but if you have better motor control patterns, it makes it a lot easier. So Brian's use of the ADM model has really increased participation in all of our camps, summer camps and our golf only camps. Brian's enthusiasm about the program also is incredible. We have a great instructor uh, with Brian and he's really the perfect uh, person to be bringing this model to our club.
this app couldn't be simpler to use. It really couldn't. I mean, if you're not using this, you're making your life a lot harder. To be able to go in there and, and you know, lay out the game plans and the things that we're doing, um, it's it's absolutely, it's as more valuable than any other tool that I have here. I think the kids are really enjoying the program, and what I've noticed the most is not only are they here in the programs, but the kids are coming out on their own. They want to practice more, and the parents are playing with them, and I'm seeing a lot of kids out here at 6 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night until dark, practicing the skills that Brian has been teaching them, and that's really what we're trying to get at here. We're showing these kids um, how they can get better, and a lot of the times we're doing that by working on coordination and playing different games and, and adhering to that ADM model that's going to allow us to have lifelong golfers. And kids are kind of fall in love with the competitive aspect of playing golf. Hello everyone and thank you for the opportunity to speak at today's chapter meeting. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Marty Hall and I am the education chair for the South Florida PGA and I'm also the assistant director for the Florida Gulf Coast University PGA Golf Management Program. But today I just wanted to provide a brief update on our section education programs. We have lots of exciting things happening. Um, while we've all had a lot of challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we did end up with an opportunity uh, from the situation to take our education programs virtual over the summer months. And this has been a tremendous success. Uh, many of you may have participated in the operating under the new normal parts one and part two, or perhaps you attended all or one of the sessions of the three part teaching symposium. Um, all of these events had 120 to 140 participants. So we realized that this is a tremendous opportunity uh, where we are successfully able to connect with so many members and bring them education in a convenient way. And so we want to build on the success going forward and we are expanding our education program. Uh, we're expanding it both in terms of frequency so education will be offered now every other week. Um, and we're also expanding it in terms of the diversity of topics that will be offered. Um, so our goals for this new program are obviously uh, to build value for each PGA member, uh, their own value, um, also learning how to add value to your facility, and certainly adding value to our PGA brand. We want to provide education on a multitude of topics, um, everything from teaching and coaching to budgeting and finance, brand awareness, social media, relevant industry trends, national initiatives, career building, and so on and so forth. Um, all of these education seminars that we'll be offering are eligible for MSR credits. Um, so this should make it easier for you to meet uh, that quota. Um, and the times and days will vary. Um, so hopefully uh, these will be more apt to fit in your schedule. I just wanted to highlight a couple of the events that are coming up after today's chapter meeting. Uh, we will have an event on October 28th. Uh, we're still working out and fine tuning uh, the details, but please stay tuned to both your email and to the section website for, for more information. On uh, November 11th, we will be offering PGA Coach, and speakers will be Jeff Price and Ted Logan. And on November 24th, we will be offering a seminar called How to Build Your Own Brand, and the speaker will be Recreation Marketing. Um, each of these events will be delivered uh, via Zoom, but we will also have a second showing of each event the following day. Um, if you're unable to catch the event at its original scheduled time, if you follow it the second day um, after the event, 
on Zoom, uh, you still will be eligible to earn the MSR credits. So you'll have two opportunities um, to participate and earn MSR for any of these events. Um, an important thing now that education is going to be more frequent and a little bit more nimble and flexible due to the virtual delivery, we encourage you to please reach out. Let us know what education topics that you would like to see. Um, you can either contact me. Uh, my email address is mhall at fgcu.edu or please feel free to reach out to Jackie Hobson. Uh, she is spearheading all of these efforts through the Section Education Office, and her email is jhobson at pgahq.com. So anyways, I just thank you for your time today, and I do hope that all of you are going to be active participants in the education program. Um, it's going to be more convenient to earn your MSR points. We're going to have expanded topics that are gonna be exciting and I think appeal to all of our diverse professional growth needs. And in the end, uh, we want to make the brand of all of us uh, in the section stronger. So and I think we're going to succeed with that. So thank you for your time today. Good morning, I'm Kathy Grayson, career consultant for the South Florida section. It is nice to see all of you over Zoom once again. Welcome to October, how did that happen? It has been a very busy summer and suddenly we are embarking on a new season. So I hope each and every one of you have had an opportunity to get some rest and maybe take a little vacation before all of our snowbirds return. Uh, they will be back soon. Uh, some of them are actually already back. So I wanna give you just a brief update on career services and what's happened uh, with employment in this section. First of all, I wanna let you know that Bruce Lubach, who is the career consultant in the Southwest section, and Carol Pence, who is the consultant in the Northern California section, have announced their retirement. Uh, Jason Bowes, who currently oversees Wisconsin, will be relocating to Arizona to serve that Southwest uh, uh, section and Sun Country. And we have posted uh, Jason's position in Wisconsin and also Carol's position in Northern Cal. So any of you interested in becoming a career consultant, uh, feel free to call me and I can fill you in on the details. Uh, so we're certainly looking for some amazing people to join our team. Uh, we love our jobs and, and what we do. And again, happy to uh, deliver any of those um, details to you if you're interested. Uh, PGA Job Board, uh, I've reached out to all of you in several different forms of communication, be it phone calls, campaigns through Salesforce, emails, and through the section newsletter. I do wanna let you know that we are no longer using the Career Links platform. So if you have not gone ahead, um, logged on to pga.org, updated your preferences, please do so. And I want to encourage everyone to do that, not only for uh, job seeking opportunities, but also for mentorship and leadership reasons. So if you're not looking for a job, it's great to keep abreast of what's going on in the section and what jobs are open so that maybe you can let your colleagues know that maybe you're looking for another opportunity or maybe some, some of our younger professionals who are ready to take that next step. So I encourage all of you to go on to job board uh, or pga.org and please update your preferences um, to look for other opportunities if, if you are so inclined and to also mentor that younger generation because that's so important as a PGA professional. Um, I want to give you an update on PGA executive searches. Uh, our section leads the nation in the number of searches that we have facilitated for our employers. Uh, this summer uh, we've uh, conducted 10. So we are finalizing Coral Creek right now, uh, which is in Placida, Florida. Jim West actually facilitated that because I had so many going on at the same time. And uh, as we work together as a team, 
he was connected to Tom Noyce, who's the general manager up there. So we uh, we asked Jim, or I asked Jim for assistance in, in conducting that search. So that'll be announced uh, probably in the next couple of weeks. They're uh, in final interviews right now. Additionally, we've added another search level to our repertoire. Uh, we have a level one search now that we're offering. And it is not a full executive search, so I would not be involved uh, from start to finish. Uh, but we do have this category that allows the employer to post a position, and ask some qualifying questions, and also we create a portal for the resumes to be housed so that inboxes aren't um, inundated. So if for some reason you're interested in that level one search, um, that is $1,000 uh, right now. And uh, it also gives us the ability to still help influence uh, compensation, which I know is so important to all of you. Um, we've done six of those level one searches this summer, and they've been very successful. And we've had some great feedback from our PG professionals and employers who've utilized that service. Uh, education, uh, we will continue to deliver education. I know the section is offering weekly education now, which some of those I, I will participate in. Um, as a team, we are also working on different um, topics of communication and, and education that we would deliver on a quarterly basis. Recently, I worked with Dean Candell with uh, GPG and did a webinar for resume writing, a podcast for resume writing. And we will continue to, to do that as well, as, as well as work with the PGM universities on delivering some education for them as well. Um, I wanna remind you that as we go into season, I know you're gonna get very busy, but updating your resume during this time is, is really the best time to do that. I wanna remind the younger professionals uh, to continue to write down your SOAR stories. And again, that's an acronym for situations that you encounter, obstacles that you overcome, actions that you take to solve those problems, and the results that it produces. And those are great stories for interviews, great stories for accomplishment statements on your resume. So if you have some opportunity over the holidays and you have some downtime when our snowbirds hopefully go back um, home for the holidays and you, you wanna refresh your resume, um, feel free to reach out to me. Again, it's the best time. Uh, during the summer is so crazy busy with hiring um, that sometimes I don't have an opportunity to help you. So please reach out during the off season and uh, keep your resume up to date. I'm wishing you all the very best and especially a happy and healthy season. Uh, please know that I'm here for you. And if you need anything, please reach out. Thank you and have a great day. Hello, everyone. Uh, first, before I turn it over to Jeff, uh, who will announce this year's winners, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, my entire committee uh, for their dedication and their efforts uh, throughout the course of this year uh, during the awards process. Um, there is a process to it. Uh, it is a lengthy one. And uh, I just, again, want to say thank you to all of you. Um, you are wonderful to work with, and I really appreciate your dedication uh, and your commitment to the process. I'd also like to thank uh, all of the nominees who filled out uh, their applications uh, and submitted them, and also to the people who nominated uh, many deserving people this year uh, in each and every respective category. Um, each candidate is thoroughly reviewed um, and vetted to ensure that we, as a committee, select the right candidate uh, for the right category. So again, thank you, everyone. And uh, Jeff, it's all yours. I have the great honor of sharing with you today the names of those our awards committee have selected to receive the 2020 Southeast Chapter Awards. Each of these individuals have demonstrated what it means to be an outstanding member of the PGA. We congratulate all of our chapter members who are also nominated for these awards. Congratulations goes to Merchandiser of the Year, Steve Hudson. Assistant of the Year, John Bednar. Youth Player Development Award, Ken Leach. 
Player Development Award, Pam Elders. PGA Professional Development Award, Sean Costello. Bill Strasbaugh Award, Don Law. Teacher of the Year, Jerry Tucker. And Golf Professional of the Year, Paul Clivio. Congratulations to you all. Thank you, Sean Costello and your committee and the beautiful work you did on that uh, awards uh, selection process. I know it is a big job. We do appreciate all your hard work. Now we're at the point of uh, consideration of old business. I know there's over 98 of you sitting there patiently waiting. Consideration of old business. I ask one more time. Yes, if you do have any old business on your mind, please type it in the chat box on the Zoom screen. Uh, again, we cannot uh, hear you, so you need to chat uh, so we can get with Jackie and Meredith. They can help us out and answer some questions or open up some old business. Last call for old business. Okay, now we're gonna move on to consideration of new business. Again, if you'd like, use that chat box on the side of the Zoom screen. You can add a few items in there if you wanna bring up some new items for new business for 2020. No new business. Okay, uh, we're moving on to now open forum. We're asking if there's any items for open forum. So please, again, utilize the chat space on the Zoom box there to open up some discussion for open forum. Okay, since there is uh, no open forum, no items there or any new business, you're gonna call to adjourn the meeting. I ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. I have a second from Paul. Okay, I announce that it has been moved and seconded to adjourn the meeting and announce that the finality of this official meeting has been adjourned.